So data collection, what are the qualities of good data collection uh, program? So first is that it has to be comprehensive, meaning you will capture all data necessary for the analysis. Like, for example, you don't just get the names. You have to include things like the dates, right? And the dates, meaning not birth dates, but date of onset of symptoms, date of test, date isolated, date um, present in or absent in school. There, comprehensive. Accurate, it has to be correct, okay? Correctly capture the data needed. Timely, it has to be rep reported on time. Because even if you have a comprehensive uh, data collection and accurate, but if you report it like a week after, then that is no long. They, that might not be useful anymore. Okay, then proportion. You don't collect. Um, you just don't collect all kinds of uh, information about the cases. You just need enough for you to uh, achieve your surveillance objectives okay that's proportionate so what data exactly will you collect so what data information will be collected why do you need to collect that specific um, information like for example if you need to collect uh, the cell phone number of the parents why do you need to collect that um, of course then you say yes of course because i have to call them to verify them i i should know uh, I, I need to talk to them directly or when I want to monitor the, the student, you know, so why will the data be collected and who will collect and validate the data? And this is the uh, number one missed step uh, across different barangays that we've observed. It's that they have specific people who will collect the data, but no one validates it. No one checks whether it's correct. Okay, so what will happen is that uh, data with errors are moved across the barangay all the way to the pro provincial level. So in the school setting, which is way smaller, it is easier to validate data. It is easier to confirm reports. So uh, you should have a protocol for collecting and validating the data. So when will the data be collected? As soon as possible, as timely as possible. Where will the data be collected? So um, where? Like on entry of the school? You know, it I guess it depends on your uh, whether you are doing active and passive surveillance or both. And how will it be stored, managed, and analyzed? Who's going to be responsible for that? Is it going to be just on paper? Um, are you going to write it on the board and erase it soon after? Of course not. So are there log books, for example? Are you going to store it on a spreadsheet? In the same manner as how do you store and manage the test results of your students, right? So uh, here, how will you store and manage and analyze the number of cases and the close contacts and the clusters. So that's step five, uh, data validation or data quality checking, five Cs. To validate your data should be complete, correct, consistent, concise, and clear. So complete meaning no missing values, having all the necessary information. That is no out of range or impossible values. Check for typos and syntax errors. Consistent, meaning you have a standardized process of encoding with unique case identifiers for each student, for each uh, teacher or, or employees involved here. So standardized meaning it's the same way of collecting uh, across the school. No, no it's not, not that. It's different for grade one or it's different per section. No, it has everyone has to be trained. There, are, there should be uh, standards for reporting. Number four, concise, meaning efficient encoding of data. Brief but adequate. And then five is to be clear, sufficient details for variable names, abbreviations, labels, response options, and actual values. And let's look at examples. So missing values. 
So sometimes, we may have a data set that looks like this. So that's missing. How will you be able to analyze this properly if you have missing data? Okay, so you should work that uh, in your data validation, always check on the missing data. Typo errors, like, let's look at this. Um, the pen doesn't look like pen. It's like one O. And then you may have um, typing like this, like, is this male or female? Or sometimes there are inconsistent, like there are spaces. So when you analyze this, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's quite difficult sometimes because you have to make decisions whether this is female or male. Values out of range, like this is age, and you can see very impossible ages for a school. One hundred one, there's negative. You know, nine is ninety nine, or is nine, or is nineteen, or twenty nine. You know, so. Yes, so the, uh, whenever you look at a data set, always look at missing, uh, first missing data, then values out of range. Then also check for duplicate entries. So it's possible that there are some students or cases that are entered more than once. So you have to check for that. In consisting encoding format, and we saw this a lot in uh, local government units. So like some would place it um, month, date, and year. The others would be date, month, and year. And then even the uh, spelling of, let's say, the barangay might be different. Missing description of variables or confusing variable names. Like it says here, notes, and it says positive, and, and that means what does that mean? Positive for what? Are they RT-PCR positive? Are they antigen positive? Are they HIV positive? <laughs> so, yeah. So, it has to be, there has to be a description of the variables. Clumped and lengthy labels. Uh, so, try to assign values that are short and uh, easy to understand. So, sometimes the labels is something like this, which is quite long. Um, so if you can shorten this, that would be better. So how do you avoid that kind of, uh, those kinds of errors, which are preventable? So one way is having a data dictionary, which will allow standardization of elements and data structure. So it uh, contains the variable name, data type, data format, description, and response option. So it looks something like this. Like variable name, data type, data format, description, and what are the response options. Okay, next is data analysis, organizing and processing the data. You have, you have the reports. Now, how do you summarize it, analyze it such that it is now, meaningful and actionable. You can use it as a basis for decision making. What kind of decisions? Who to isolate? Who to quarantine? Whether to do uh, a lockdown or something? So, there. So, that's the analysis.